Antarctica is losing six times more ice each year than it was four decades ago. That's according to a new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. You can actually see the difference in the past decade compared to the 1980s. The large, the larger sort of red circle as you see there, the more ice is being lost in those parts. And currently the Antarctic ice sheets hold about 90 percent of the world's ice. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, if all that ice were to melt, sea levels would actually rise more than 200 feet. Joining me now is Dar Jamail, author of the new book, The End of Ice, Bearing Witness and Finding Meaning in the Path of Climate Disruption. And for his book, he actually visited various hotspots around the world to see how humans are coping with ecosystems being challenged and changed by climate change. Dar, thank you, first off, for joining us. Thanks for having me. How'd you get involved in this? You're, you have a background as a reporter and a mountaineer, too, if I can say it that way. Yeah, I really started back when I moved to Alaska back in the mid-90s and started mountain climbing. And so even back then, dramatic changes of glaciers retreating and much warmer temperatures. So I've known about this since then. And then more recently, I shifted my reportage over to cover it because it's such an important story. Was there a point when you realized that this is just such a significant change? It's back in probably 2013, I wrote a big story that addressed sea level rise, what happens when the permafrost melts, methane release in the Arctic, and put all this together and really understood that we are so far down the path already and, and how big of a story this is and how much it's going to impact literally every single person on the planet. When we talk about climate change, and especially with this administration, it's so heated. You know, people have such personal viewpoints on this. For you, when you did your travels, what really stood out to you as a moment or, or a, a significant moment that really made you rethink how you looked at climate change? How fast it was happening. I, it was 2017. I was snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef with a scientist, and he was showing me all of this coral bleaching resulting from the warming uh, waters. And I had been there roughly 20 years before to the same place, and none of this was happening. So literally on a geologic time scale, it's happening like that. Mm -hmm. So really the, 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 the amazing speed at which this is happening, which is kind of in, in, in gross disparity to the amount or the lack of effort by the administration to really dealing appropriately with what is a, the biggest crisis on our hands. We were talking, I'm from Tampa, Florida, and people are so worried about rising sea levels. And you said that was one of the biggest things that surprised you on your, your trip, learning. Right. I interviewed a scientist, Dr. Harold Wanless at University of Miami, one of the sea, uh, leading sea level rise experts in the world. And he informed me a shocking piece of information, which is geologic history shows every time the Earth goes in and out of an ice age, there's a, a big fluctuation in the CO2 in the atmosphere. And for every 100 part per million CO2 that you add to the atmosphere, there's a course 100 feet of sea level change. So tying in with the news you shared at the very beginning of our discussion, we've added 130 parts per million CO2 to the atmosphere, so that's 130 feet of sea level rise. That's pretty significant. That's shocking. Basically, it's a say goodbye to Florida, most of the state, uh, and, and virtually every coastal city in the world will be underwater. You know, as a Florida resident, we've heard this, and I feel like many people just over decades haven't really taken it seriously, but when you're saying this could happen, what are we talking about timeline? It's not could happen, it's going to happen. The question is when, and um, re uh, really, there's various uh, scientific studies that show we could see 10 feet possibly by 2050. Wow. Uh, the, the current IPCC worst case projection is around uh, six to seven feet by 2100. Wow. But uh, that's, you know, so far, the current reality of how fast things are happening consistently outpace the worst case IPCC projections. This stood out to us in your book. You describe the planet as most likely being in a hospice situation. Is it a little too late at this point? It's too late to certainly change or stop climate change. It's not too late to try to do everything in our power to try to mitigate the impacts. There is still time to maybe keep that using sea level rise as an example. Instead of seeing maybe six to eight feet by 2100, if we did everything we could not just in the U.S. but around the globe, maybe we could shave a few feet off of that. So mm. I feel like we're we're, we're personally and morally obliged to still do absolutely everything in our power that we can. As I said, this is so political, climate change these days, and with this administration in particular. If there's one thing politicians could do that could make a difference, what would that be? Uh, get us off fossil fuels as rapidly as possible and switch over to using renewable energy. And, and yeah, that's a tall order, but that is the task before us today. Dar Jamal, I want to thank you very much. The book is called The End of Ice, Bearing Witness and Finding Meaning in the Path of Climate Disruption. Thank you very much for your reporting. Thank you.